Hello YouTube. Today I am going to review Rio Bravo. Starring John Wayne, Dean Martin, Ricky Nelson, Angie Dickinson, Walter Brandon. Featuring John Russell and Claude Akins. For those that don't know about Dove or Two, let y'all know. Claude Akins was pretty much a that guy from that thing, kind of in the between the fifties and seventies. Also started in a show called Moving On, which was a two season show, show about where he was a trucker. Most highlight of that was Merle Haggard did the theme song, and then you got John Russell, who at the same time was in the movie Lawman, I mean TV series as Marshal Dan Troop. But back to the movie, back to the real Bravo, which I gotta say is an excellent, excellent pairing because you have, because you got John Wayne, Dean Martin, which is one out of two, two outings of where the Duke and Dina work together. The other being Sons of Katie Eller, but that's for another review. And of course Walter Branning. Who was best known at, as Grandpa as as playing Grandpa on on Real McCoys, and a few uh, westerns and such, which, of course, this said movie here was Real Bravo was directed by Howard Hawks, who I might say was the like the Tarantino, John Woo, Barbara Rodriguez rolled in a run back back in his heyday. I'm just like. Yep, that guy could, could direct movies. And and Rio Bravo just has happens to be one of the I'd say in my top five of John Wayne performances because I mean for a two hour twenty minute movie has everything in it. Has like the action, the romance, because uh, Angel Dickinson plays Duke's love interest, who was supposedly Supposed to leave on a stage, but given how how far the movie was, where Sheriff John T. Chance played David and his deputies, Dude and Stumpy, and and then you had Color Rock played by Dean Martin and Ricky Nelson. And let me say something about the character dude was basically just John, Dean Martin, obviously as a cow playing himself as a cowboy. Cause anything knows about Dean Martin knows that he loved his alcohol. <laughs> and which is also playing, and of course with comic relief of a Pedro Gonzalez Gonzalez, who was actually grandfather of current actor Criflin. Clifton Collins Jr. and of course Walter Brennan as Deputy Stumpy, who just who was kind of like who just looked after jail. While, well, at the beginning of the movie, it starts out with out with the outlaw played by Claude Aikens killing a man in cold blood in a saloon, and then getting arrested by Duke and the gang by du by Duke and the gang gang being Dean Martin and. And John Wayne, his character said, of course, old Claude Akins could play like the the good good guy or the asshole or the asshole because I mean he was kind of kind of like the Bruce Campbell of his day, and of course you got Ricky Nelson, and of course you had the Rob who was in back to where I said mentioned John Russell's character was was a Calabar named Burdette. Whose, whose brother just happened to have been Claude Aiken's character, Joe Burdett. I'm talking about the, in, in the, the movie, not real life, of course. Which all of course starts, a, starts off with a range roar with, of course, with Sheriff Chance and his deputies in the middle. After, spoiler alert, when Ward Bond's character, Joe Wheeler, gets it's killed killed by Burdett's men. I can say, oh, that's one of the one of the more epic 
shooting scenes in that movie when Dean Martin, when Dude played by, or I say Bar Chun played played by played by Dino gets chased by, get, get, is chasing the out the hit the hitman with with the trademark fifty dollar gold piece. Pay attention for right that movie because that's foreshadowing. Because as a as how over out over gun hands be found. Be found a fifty dollar gold pieces was once in scenes where either Sheriff Chance, Colorado, or just Ricky Nelson's character or dude or War you know, it's pretty much almost every every motherfucker that dies in that movie. And and of course that was the one where when when drunken dude drunk when the drunk North War Chong, which it's it's Spanish for so or I'm not gonna say, correct me if I'm wrong, which was just the, the Mexican nickname for drunk. Oh, well, back to the, the shootout when 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 Borchon chases the out outlaw through to the to a to a neighboring bar or should I say saloon, which where he was hiding. And the outlaw thought he was hiding good because he hid in like the ceiling and such. But ooh, a piece of blood drops into the into a beer, and dude's like, boom, shoots that one down. And back to Ward Bond's character. Now, Ward Bond. Now that was a good, excellent actor from from the era who was basically known for westerns. Who at the time was actually doing a show called Wagon Train. Fun fact, actually, he and country legend Johnny Horton died on the same day. When Bond had a heart attack, Horton had a car accident, ironically, to go meet. Ironically, because Horton was actually going to meet Bond to to, to do a deal to get on the sh on his show. Now, that's enough about that, but back to, back to Rio Bravo. And, of course, he got, like, some excellent oils. Along with excellent shootout, shootouts and acting chemistry between John, between the cast, and oh, I gave it a Walter Brandon. Uh, he, he was being the comic relief character. You know, like Chuppy G. Hulsa Fanson. God, I cannot do a good Walter Brennan impression. But old movies, if you got like the kind of like cantankerous old guy. You're pretty much looking at Walter Brennan from, from, from like older movies from like the 50, 40, 40s, 50s, 60s. One of them candidates. And of course, Randy Jackson being like the love interest of who in in her movie database is only listed as Fevers, who never surprisingly released a real name. And then you have Ricky Nelson's character who. Who in turn was actually started off as one as a gun hand for 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 Wheeler, who was Ward Bond's character. Character. But later on becomes a deputy. Later on becomes like I said, later on becomes a deputy. And of course, given how he was all he alongside, of course, Dino were we're being at the time. We're both known for being musicians, more known for being musicians than actors. They had a good, excellent singing num summers, and which there's like a scene where they're just hanging out in a jail, and and they get like songs called "My Rifle, My Pony, and Me," and Cindy, Cindy, kind of like a two-part duo feature, which a lot of people consider like like the, when the uh, Make a big deal about David Bowie and Bring Carsbury singing White Christmas together, like I, like that was the first cross a rocker and a pop singer cross up crooner crossover. And you gotta go back to 1959 when this movie was made. When you have rockabilly icon and the first person ever to be not called a teen idol, Ricky Nelson going against a Rat Pack member, Rat Packer, Dean Martin. Which is. Gotta be lit, which especially when the second song, Cindy Cindy, when he get 
get Walter Brennan coming in. Now Walter Brennan, he actually had a few music career. He actually was known for a, a hit song called called Old Weber Wherever's, which is technically a spoken word country song, but hey, dude could sing. Dude could do, dude is talented. And of course, of course, you gotta have some excellent action scenes, of course. Because, I mean, if you, got, you can't have the Duke without some action now, can you? I mean, come on. Like the, like one scene where, when they're, when he in Colorado, when Chance in Colorado are cor cornered outside a, outside a saloon by, by a couple of hit men, gun hands, and, and then to distract them, Andrew Dickinson's character throws a flower pot and they go, you know, boom, boom. And of course he got that. Got like at the at the ending when the final shootout at the end. Now that's gotta be one of the most epic sh shootouts for a Western movie. I mean, come on, John Wayne, Ricky Nelson, and Dean Martin's characters having a night with Burdett's men. <laughs> especially, especially in the scene where Walter Brennan Stumpy shows up, and there's. Sequence, old scenario where, where he, where Chance, Sheriff Chance played, of course, like I mentioned, was was played by the Duke, telling him to throw a stick of dynamite at him, and and of course Duke is went his rifle be like shoots that, trying to bring the house down, bring bring a ranch down. <laughs> He's gonna stop gaggling. Yeah, which has been a, a old epic. Which, of course, real Bravo, I give a a five out of five because, I mean, it's a masterpiece when it comes to westerns. Not just John Wayne westerns. I'm just talking about westerns. Period. Practically one of the few movies you could actually say a stick of dynamite was actually used as a clay pigeon. And of course, Ooh. and of course, you gotta have the subplot where, like I mentioned, where Angie Dickinson's character was actually love interest of John Wayne's character, which kind of a little ironic because she's supposed to be like early twenties, and John Wayne was like his character was like fifty or something, old enough to be her dad. <laughs> but I guess that's kind of an odd one, but. I'm not gonna call it a flop, a flaw, because this is a I gotta say a flawless masterpiece when it of a movie. I mean, I mean, personally, I gotta say when it comes to what, what movie mo, Dean Martin's mo, movie roles, I'd say westerns were his best ones, which, of course, is like. This movie I'm here, I'm here to review like real, real Bravo and Sons of Katie Elder, which that's like I just mentioned, that's for another one, and then you have, and then, well, I about ran out of things to say. Enjoy, people. Oh, I was just thinking, uh, yeah, enjoy.